I'm absolutely loving my makeup today. This is kind of like my go-to everyday makeup look and it only consists of like three products minus the mascara, the lip liner and the lipstick. So do let me know if you want like a really quick tutorial. So a favourites video. It has been so long since I've sat down and done one of these. <sighs> And I have everything. <laughs> I'm literally sitting here with a couple of towels on my knee, a gold hand, <laughs> books. <laughs> so I might as well just start with the two towels that I have here in front of me. I got these yesterday. So I actually went into a Dunelm to get this hand. <laughs> we'll get to it. And I seen these towels. I just think it's beautiful. It is so cool. So it's basically just like a hand sized towel. I'm actually going to put this down in our wee downstairs bathroom. Not a fan of this side though, but it's this side. So it's reversible. I'm so excited for it. So I actually went and picked up the bigger size. So I think there was three sizes. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not too sure. So I got the smaller size there and then I got a bigger size and this is just gonna be like a body towel that I'm gonna be using. And again, it's that reversible tiger print burnt orange towel. And they're actually really nice and soft. I've never actually had towels from Denim, so it'll be quite nice to try them. Obviously these were just bought yesterday, so they haven't been washed or anything yet. So I actually have a box here to show you because it might be a wee bit confusing to understand what it actually is, but it's a towel holder. <laughs> so can you see? Can you see? So it's basically, oh, I might actually put the towel on it. It's basically gonna come out of the wall on this side and you just drape the towel over it. I don't know whether this is so ugly, so cheap, so tacky looking, but with our downstairs bathroom, that's one thing I really wanted to do with it, was just make it really quirky. I want people to sit on that toilet and just look at stuff, and just people to look at the most random shit. <laughs> and this is very random and very quirky. We also got the toilet roll holder, which is downstairs. Don't know if I'm a fan of it or not, but... <laughs> I was going to wait and leave talking about this product until my empties video because I would say maybe in the next couple of weeks I'll actually get through this so I'll be talking to you guys about this product pretty soon but it is the Tan Lux The Gradual Eliminating Face Tan Now, um, hmm, it doesn't actually say that it is a face tan it's just a eliminating gradual tan and lotion I'm not too sure, I'm pretty sure you'd be able to use this in your legs, chest body, arms, I don't know, but I specifically use this for my face and I love this. I find it very, very hard to find a really nice, a really good thick tan for my face or just a face tanner. I feel like some will just grab in here or after maybe two to three days, it will become patchy and blotchy around my face. It will stick and gather in certain areas. It applies even, but it also removes even. So you're not actually left with like it gathering around your eyebrows or in around your nose or because it's a lotion, it's it's a really really nice liquidy formula so it's really nice and lightweight on the skin and it also provides a bit of like a moisturizing feel to your skin as well so your skin is only get not only getting a wee bit of color but it's you know it's getting moisturized as well so I do feel like it probably does have some skincare benefits in this but it's wide wide nice and you do get quite a lot of this so this is like a wee hundred ml bottle it doesn't actually look that big but I've had this for I want to say about a year at this point if you have been on TikTok <laughs> In any way, shape or form, this product, no doubt, would have been at some stage rammed down your throat, my bottle. And I will continue to buy this because this is so good. This has been, would I say a life changer? No. <laughs> but it is such a really good product. So it's the Rose and Caramel Purity XL 60 Second Self Tan Remover. This is actually one of those products that... <sighs> It, re it really does do what it says and does what it claims to do. <laughs> Sometimes we're just sucked into such gimmicky products these days. So this is basically just like a really thick gel and it has a grittiness to it. So you know like exfoliating beads. What you'll do is you'll take a slap of it and you'll rub it say arms, chest, neck, 
whatever and you'll start to massage and buff this into the skin and what it's going to do is it's going to remove your fake tan. I find that this is great especially on areas where your fake tan seems to really stick to. I don't know about anybody else but with myself like I know in the next couple of days I will be removing this tan but my fake tan seems to stick in like these areas in my armpit like the armpit crease um like here like the fake tan just I'm scrubbing and I'm scrubbing and I'm scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing until my skin is red raw whereas I've noticed like see if I just take some of this and just slather it on a wee bit and just kind of let it do its thing great <laughs> Because I do find that 9 out of 10 times my fake tan will come off easily anyway, sunlight down. Um, but no, this is so, so good for those harder areas to remove your fake tan. Now, because I wear false lashes all the time, a mascara is something that I really couldn't care less about. However, I love this mascara. <laughs> What's up, beauty? Watch me mascara. So I did get this actually kindly sent to me in PR, but it's the brush. It's the brush that I absolutely love. So it's double sided. I'm not too sure how well you're gonna see this. If I can get a close up picture from the website, I'll add or upload a picture of it. But basically on this side here, it's like a comb. It's literally just one strip of bristles. And it's those like hard bristles. The only way I can describe it is, you know the benefit they're real mascara? those like comb bristles and then just on the other side of the mascara wand is just your normal bristles. I don't know how well I'm explaining that but yeah. The one strip of comb bristles, I love this for really getting right in at the root and it does such a good job of separating the lashes and also lower lash line mascara wild wild good whereas the rest of the wand and the bristles it's just a fantastic mascara i'm wearing it today right and i'm not wearing a lot it was literally just like boom 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 just on the outer corner of my lashes because I'm not wearing a lot of makeup today don't need a lot of mascara whenever i go in and take my time with this mascara it does such a fantastic job of just adding so much volume to my lashes i couldn't care less about curl not necessarily volume or length sorry length but i do like a lot of volume in at my roots yeah great if it applies or adds a bit of length to my scar that's fabulous but i just love the look that this mascara and what this mascara actually does for my lashes since i got this in pr i haven't stopped using it literally and it's actually it's nearly done like i know it is done i would say in the next couple of weeks i'll be able to actually just get rid of it and just buy another one and i have a favorite lip liner at the moment morphe and it is in the shade sweetest tea is it sweet tea by morphe which is the brown one that everybody is obsessed with love that one as well but i have recently discovered this one in my lip liner collection i didn't even know that i had it what a wee freaking hidden gem where have you been where have you been bitch <laughs> where have you bloody been <laughs> i'm actually wearing it today with the huda beauty sweet cheeks yeah sweet cheeks cream lipstick but i find that it's just it's such a nice lip liner for everyday wear with it not being a nude. I feel like, yeah, nudes are great and they're great for everyday wear, but sometimes a wee bit of colour, that's what I'm looking for now, a wee bit of colour in my lip liner. Don't get me wrong, it still has like a brown nude base, but there's a rosiness and a bit of a red to this. I feel like it's the perfect lip liner shade as well because it goes well with like these really nice nude shades. But also, there's a lip colour I've been wearing a while lot recently. Hold on. This colour here. This is the lip product I've been using basically like every day at the minute. And it goes perfectly with that lip colour. So it does. So it's just a really good all-rounder lip liner. And obviously because it's Morphe and they have a really good lip liner formula, it just glides on. It's super, super pigmented. I feel like if I was to go a wee bit lighter with my hand, it would be my lips but better type of colour. So if you're on TikTok, this perfume also would have been shoved down your throat. But you know what grabbed me was just Arabic perfumes. I want to smell rich. <laughs> 
I want to smell luxurious. I want to smell rich. I do not want to smell like a Christian housewife in training. I want to smell like a French whore and rich and luxurious and just, oh. But this is the Jezab Gold perfume. And this is only 11 89 I can't actually remember how much I paid for it. But when I tell you, I was actually so excited to receive this and smell it. It's definitely a ginger skin. Buying perfumes that you can't smell before you buy. But I just, I just trust all the girlies. <laughs> I have my trust in all the girlies over on TikTok. And yes. This smells lush. Do you know what it smells like though? If any of you have ever tried Giorgio Armani C, it smells fresh, yet floral, like a citrusy kick there. And it also has notes of cedar and rose, but its base notes are woody, amber, cedar, oud, oud, <laughs> oud, oud and patchouli. It's a hundred ml, so it's a real good big bottle. For it being nearly a tenner, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, and do you know what? The smell of this, trust me whenever I say it, it is lovely. I know some perfumes can be very personal. Sometimes you just either love them or hate them. I can understand that. Um, like for example, you see, is it YSL Black Opium? Gag worthy and not in a good way. But that's what I mean, you know? I could be here suggesting for you to try this perfume. You maybe get it, try it, think, holy shit, that is stinking. If that happens, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I do love it. It smells really, really nice. And do you know what? The quality of this perfume is really good too. Like it lasts such a long time and it does really linger. The Vive Modern Radiance Concealer. This is actually what I have on my face today. I'm gonna give you a really uncomfortable zoom in. This is the only product that I have on my face today, mixed with the e.l.f. Halo Glow. So this is my go-to everyday makeup look, by the way. And then I've just done a wee bit of bronzing on the outer perimeter, cheekbones, whatever, with the Doll Beauty Gimme Sun Cream. But this concealer is phenomenal. I don't know if you can see, but it is scraped within an inch of its life. I've even took the stopper out. I took the stopper out, I think, just after New Year, last month or something. And I've still been trying to just gather every ounce of concealer out of this. Do you know something? I don't know why I don't just think to myself, oh, do you know what? That product's done. I'll just go and buy another one. And the shade I take is Light 2. So it's actually the perfect shade for my natural skin tone. So whenever it's actually blended in, it just looks so skin-like and it has the most beautiful finish. It provides the most beautiful coverage. And it's a very versatile concealer as well in the fact that if I'm going for a more full coverage, full glam type of makeup look or something like today, I can do that. I can customize my coverage with this. Don't be fooled, the formula, this is just my personal opinion, I feel like the formula definitely is a wee bit of a thicker consistency to maybe more lighter coverage or more liquidy concealers. Obviously every formula of concealer is different, but I do feel like this is a thicker formula, but it blends beautifully. It just blends so nicely and seamlessly into the skin. And I feel like the reason I feel and see that is because of the shade that I've got. Because it's so perfect for my skin tone, it's unreal. It just, it's nearly invisible on my skin, but it just makes my skin look freaking flawless. Like as you can see, I'm gonna give you another really uncomfortable zoom in for no reason whatsoever. Don't get me wrong, because I am filming today, I have went a wee bit more fuller coverage with the concealer, but if I'm, say, going to the gym, or just pop it out, get some groceries, or just, I don't know, do whatever, I'll go a wee bit lighter, but looking at my skin now, this is literally the only two products that I have on my skin. And of course, the um, Doll Beauty stuff. But looking at the coverage, and looking at the finish that these two products have gave on my skin, I have no powder on as well. So I've probably got creasing and everything on my under eyes. But it's amazing. I absolutely love this concealer. It's so good. So I want to talk about this wee body lotion. And, and it's Superdrug's own brand. So this is the Vitamin E Skincare Radiant Glow Eliminating a Body Lotion. You say body lotions that provide a really nice 
just lit from within glow. I don't want sparkle. I don't want glitter in my body lotions or body oils. I just want a sheen, a really nice shine that doesn't look greasy, that doesn't look sticky. Oh, is it too much to ask for? No, it's not because I find that product that provides all of that. But that's what it looks like there. It just feels and looks like a really nice thin body lotion. It's not too thick or nothing because sometimes I don't like body moisturizers or body lotions that are too thick and too rich on the skin. So this is really nice and lightweight. But I just really want to show you like, the really nice glow this gives to the skin. Oh, it's so pretty. And it smells nice as well, you know, like the vitamin E, I think, is it the, the spray that you get from Superdrug? That's what it smells like. No, I don't think you can see that at all. I wonder if I try it on my hand. This is so frustrating, and I can see. You can kind of see. You see the way it just gives like a really nice glow from within? It just makes your skin look beautiful. And you're going to have to take my word for it, seriously. <laughs> Please do. It's just for the finish that this gives you. Like that really nice, soft, 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 subtle glow. Like you can see it a wee bit coming through. I feel like whenever I have more of a tan on, you can definitely see it more. Um, whereas like I'm obviously a couple of days due of taking this tan off, but I can definitely notice the difference in my two hands, so I can. But just, no, definitely, if you're in super drug and you see this, do pick it up and just give it a go. It is honestly lovely. Lastly, I was kind of in two minds on whether to actually share this with you or not, but recently I've been really into reading. I got into reading last year and, you see at the minute, and, it, and that's the way it has been since, you know? I cannot go to bed now without reading and I absolutely, I love it. So I would thought I would just show you is like the books and the authors that I love and that I've been reading at the minute. They're all history books. <laughs> um, I love my history. So this is the book that I'm reading at the minute. It's by Alison Weir. Um, between Alison Weir and Tracy Borman would definitely be my two favourite authors. And uh, this is the one I say I'm reading at the minute, A Dangerous Inheritance. So it's actually about a lady, Catherine Grimes. So if you have any knowledge or any idea about the Tudor times, Lady Catherine Grey was actually the younger sister to Lady Jane Grey. So that's what I'm reading at the minute. But I have these other books as well. So this one by Alison Weir is The Lady in the Tower. So this is obviously Anne Boleyn. Definitely like the Tudor times is my Roman Empire. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I always have. I've always been like such a history nerd and that's what really annoyed me about school was the fact that like I didn't get taught what I wanted to so I basically spent my whole life educating myself on what I'm interested in when it comes to history. I love English history when it comes to like the Tudor times and everything. I love American history. Um, like the... I don't really want to get into American history too much because I don't want to offend anybody, but um, like slavery and stuff, I have like a really, really big interest in that. It was just an absolutely horrific time and with like the whole Black Lives Matter movement and everything, I felt so strongly about it because we never get taught anything that in school. I, we, we didn't have a clue. Um, and like the Jim Crow laws and everything, we kind of brushed past that. Um, so I took it upon myself to actually really educate myself in that time in America, segregation and stuff, um, but also I love German history as well, like World War II and, you know, just things like that. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. What I'm just trying to say is I just absolutely love history. I feel like if I'm going to waste my time and read. I want to get educated in the process. <laughs> so at the minute it has just been history books with the Tudor times. So obviously Anne Boleyn. And this is another one by Alison Weir, Mary Boleyn. It's actually called The Great and Infamous Whore. Eek. <laughs> we have two others from Alison Weir, The Six Tudor Queens. This is Anne Boleyn. So basically these are um, like a collection of books where it will be six books dedicated to Henry VIII's wives. So I only, I think I only have one or two. I think I have Jane Seymour and this one, Anne Boleyn. So I really want to get the other ones and I'm pretty sure it's basically just like their 
just their life really but you see these books in particular I do like to get the hardback books by the way if you haven't noticed they are a wee bit of a pain in the arse to actually read and hold in the evenings but they are so much nicer whenever they're actually up in your bookcase but I've actually took it out of the packaging but look at these books to the side aren't they absolutely beautiful like I really do take pride in like beautiful books as well on the inside gorgeous <laughs> um and then also, where the fuck did that, oh yeah. And honestly, see if you are interested in like the Tudor era, Tudor times, whatever, and especially reading about it, I would highly, highly, highly recommend these books here by Tracy Borman. So there's three of these, they're kind of like a trilogy. This is the third one. And I think, I didn't realize what I had done, but I actually ended up reading the second one first, the first one second, and then the third one third. <laughs> But you know what, even though I messed up and I'd done that, I was still able to easily follow along with what was happening and what was going on. So these are also set in Tudor times as well, but um, just out of Elizabeth I's reign. This one is the third one, which is The Fallen Angel, and then there is The King's Witch and The Devil's Slave. I think The King's Witch is the first one, um, and it's around the time of Guy Fawkes. James the first, Guy Fox, you know, but they're all around that type of era. But they're so, so good. They were a really, a really a good read. I got to the point where I just could not wait to get to bed at night and read my book. Literally, I could not wait to get through these. They were definitely a page turner. I just, oh my God, it, it got so good. <laughs> like, I used to always look at people that talked about books like that and think, fucking nerd alert. <laughs> Whereas now I'm one of those people that I just, I love books. If I can link and list any of these down below, I can and I will for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.